This was done on a real windy day, so I'm substituting the audio. This is a new mask that I got to start with, uh, and it helps me to see the workpiece better, the, what I'm welding better, the, uh, the weld puddle. Um, the other mask I was using was just, it was an auto-darkening mask, but it auto-darkened too much. And where this one has a knob on it to adjust just how dark you want it, I can dial that in better so that I can see the workpiece, the outlines of it, and what the weld puddle is doing. So I'm using this new mask. If you're wondering which one it is, look for the cheapest auto darkening adjustable shade welding mask you can find on eBay, and chances are that's the one I bought. So let's get right into the welding and how it looks as I'm going to weld on this material right here. It's just a couple of uh, pieces of old brake shoes. Uh, part of a brake pad and part of a parking brake that came off my pickup. And since it is windy, I'm not worried about grinding it down and cleaning it up and uh, breathing in anything that, that grinds off the piece. I'm using 030 wire. I've put some black electrical tape around the tip of the gun, removed the copper nozzle to get that out of the way, thanks to your recommendations on YouTube. And eventually I'll probably get the uh, hard plastic piece that really does slide over the end of this, this gun. Uh, as far as the wire feed, I've got the wire feed unit tension set very light. So it's got a light feed pressure on it. The settings on the machine are maximum amperage and wire speed at 5, even though for 3 16 steel, which I think this would qualify for, uh, the unit recommends a setting of 9 for wire speed. So I'm going to try 5 first and then go up from there, see if we get any differences. But So I might stop here and there along the way and test things out. This is uh, wire speed number 5. Okay, let's clean that up a bit. Okay, well there's the weld. Wire speed setting was on five. You can see that there are some curves here. As I was feeding, I was moving the gun back and forth between the two pieces, making like a zigzag back and forth. I'm gonna try wire speed setting number four now. Let's lighten it up. I don't know if it needs quite this much. I'm gonna to go to number four and see what that looks like. Well, I think it's fairly obvious that wire speed setting four was not enough. And I didn't come on to this lower piece enough. I stayed up on here on the upper piece, I believe, but uh, this is wire speed setting four. This is wire speed setting five. Wire feed speed is number six. And there is wire speed setting number six right through here. So here's five, here's four. Didn't quite stay in the, uh, the uh, V of the two work pieces very well right here. Sorry about that. And then this is wire speed number six right here. So five and six, very similar. I think I went a little slower when I was using five and I might've 
actually crawled a little too fast using number six on the wire feed speed, but the results look pretty good. It looks like it looks like it's a nice solid weld. Looks like it would hold these two pieces together if I was really working on something for real. Let's see if I can fill in the gap there where I welded number four, wire feed number four. Let's try wire feed six right over the, uh, the gap there. Okay, well here's the same piece, but now I filled this in with wire feed speed number six, and it looks like it did a really good job from here on across, filling in what I missed before. And I welcome your comments. What do you think? Is that a strong looking weld? Would that hold? It might not be pretty, but would it be a structurally solid weld to hold these two pieces together? And as you can see, it's still hot. Wire feed speed number five. Okay, well, either I went too fast, which that could be the case. I did feel like I was in a bit of a hurry. Or I didn't have the wire feed speed set high enough. Should have gone to number six or seven. It started to get a little better in this area. And then it got to the end. Well, through the magic of editing, I've reset. It took me a while to grind this weld off and separate these two. I was surprised at how much it really held on. Maximum amperage, speed number six. Okay, that's me getting the gun too close to the workpiece and the tip is touching. And it's looking kind of ugly anyway. Let's take a break here and see what we've got. Let's go to number five. See if five acts any better. Check that out. It felt a little better. Okay, it's a little hard to see, but this is the weld, not down here, up here. From here to here is wire feed setting number five, and I was taking my time with my zigzags. As you may have seen in the video, it's going very slow, very deliberately zigzagging back and forth. And I think this is more of the flex core weld, how it should look, rather, especially rather than down here where it was number six, and I was probably hurrying. I can see the individual zigzags here, so I should have gone a bit slower, I suppose. 
but for me, anyway, the novice, the beginner, feed number five for this thick of a steel, maximum amperage, gives a pretty good weld in my opinion. It's solid, it fills the, uh, the V in there really well. So for me, using a welder that I can plug into a 110 outlet, which this one is plugged in directly into an outlet, or an extension cord, I don't use, need to use a, a gas over the uh, coming out of the nozzle. So that's what the purpose of the flux burning, the smoke. Uh, it's taking up the uh, oxygen away from the weld and covering it with that slag to protect it as you go. Um, but DC electrode negative is what's recommended for flux core wire. So if you're, if you're MIG welding with flux core, you should be using DC electrode negative. And where this unit comes from the factory, set up as AC, alternating current. It's attracting the metal, it's repelling the metal. It's attracting the metal and repelling it. 60 cycles a second here in the United States. It's uh, also dragging some of that flux in with the metal, uh, inside the metal with that alternating current as it pulses. And that's why I get more splatter. See, I've got some splatter. There are some BBs here but not as much as this would, have, would show if it was AC only. So with it set up in the DC configuration, it's uh, pulling the metal to the workpiece from the gun, and the heat is being pushed into the workpiece as well, quite a bit, uh, more than it was with the AC. Make sure your workpieces are very clean, ground down, with the grinder, the brush, whatever it takes. Make sure they're clean, setting the right wire feed speed, taking my time in welding and zigzagging back and forth on the work piece as I go between the two pieces that are being joined together. Almost like I'm stitching them together with thread and needle, just zigzagging back and forth between the two pieces. That's what I've learned to do. It seems to work very well, especially when I got down to this end of the piece where the weld looks much better. And again, there's a, uh, another piece of flat steel sandwiched between these two that's welded to this horseshoe brake, a former brake disc anyway. Um, down here are different speeds. I think we had four here, or five here, four, but then came back and went over it with a six, and then five down here. And so I've had various good luck and bad luck with the wire feed settings and the speed as I'm zigzagging between the two pieces. I've got to learn to slow down. That's my problem. I'm going too fast. I'm in a hurry and I'm not paying attention to uh, actually stitching the two pieces together with the molten metal, the puddle. Just letting it melt into the two pieces and taking my time going slowly between the two. So I think it's better than what I've welded before as far as the looks of it and the strength of it. Uh, I've seen some improvement. So I want to thank you all for your tips, everybody else for uploading your videos and showing us how to do it, and DC electrode negative with the flux core wire. So all these tips have really helped me out. I want to thank everybody for giving me more tips. And if you've got anything else to pass along, then I'm all ears. Thanks.